Now, what are colligative properties? Okay, so it's a very important topic for calculation of like you know many molecular mass and the properties, etc. So, first, let us see what are these colligative properties. Suppose, let me take a beaker with only solvent molecules. Okay, so to this solvent, a pure solvent, I am going to add a non-volatile solute. Volatile solute. We can take, for example, sodium chloride, glucose, anything like that. So, what will happen now? Suppose let us consider this solvent will have some vapor pressure, right? Let us take a closed beaker. So, these uh, solvent molecules will have some vapor pressure. Now, if I add a non volatile solute to this solvent, so these solute molecules will occupy on the surface of the solvent. So, now what will happen to the vapor pressure? The vapor pressure will decrease because the some positions of the solvent are occupied by the solute molecules. Similarly, there are other physical properties like the boiling point, then we can take freezing point, osmosis pressure all these properties will change when we add a non volatile solute to the solvent. So, these properties like you know wherein there is a change in these physical properties are called colligative properties. Okay? So, what are the different types of colligative properties? The relative lowering of vapor pressure, elevation in boiling point, depression in freezing point and osmotic pressure. So, first let us see one by one. The first one is relative lowering of vapor pressure. So, what is that? So, as I told you like you know when we take a pure solvent let us consider it is P naught A. So, this will have some vapor pressure and when I add this non volatile solute to this these solute molecules will occupy the solvent molecules and the vapor pressure will decrease. So, we know for the pure solvent the vapor pressure is greater than this pressure wherein we have added some solute particles. So, now according to Raoult's law we know the pressure because of this that is by adding the solute is equal to P naught of that is of the pure solvent into the x 1. So, now what is this uh, like mole fraction? We know the total mole fraction will be always equal to 1 that is x 1 plus x 2 that is because of the solute and solvent. Now, let us derive this. So, we can take P is equal to P naught. So, instead of x 1 we have taken as, as x 2 because we are going to add a solute. So, this becomes x 1 becomes 1 minus x 2 or your P is equal to P naught minus P naught x 2 and we know that P naught minus P by P naught is equal to x 2. So, this P naught minus P by P naught is the relative lowering relative lowering of vapor pressure of vapor pressure. So, that is equal to the mole fraction of the solute that is x 2. So, from this uh, formula we can also calculate the molecular mass of the solute. Okay? So, now we know the relative lowering of vapor pressure is equal to the mole fraction of the solute. So, we know the mole fraction is equal to N 2 divided by N 1 plus N 2 that is because of the solute and solid. So, now when we see here when we add solute, so solute will be less in quantity when compared to the solvent. So, we will ignore this term. Okay, when compared to N 1. So, rearranging this we know the mole uh, number of moles will be equal to the given weight by molecular weight of the solute divided by now we are going to take only the solvent particles okay? that is W 1 by M 1. So, now here we have to calculate the uh, more, uh, like you know uh, what is the molecular mass of M 2 that is the solute. So, now rearranging this we can write M 2 will be equal to W 2 that is the weight of the solute into the molecular mass mass of the solvent divided by the weight of the solvent into the relative lowering of vapor pressure.